Well, this would be a weird hand to raise, but then again, Ludo's sporting a German flag and a Scottish accent, if that explains anything. Ludo is raising, makes it 16,000. Javier Atayo with 9-10 suited. This would be an absolutely fine call from the cutoff. He does call. Jeff Ross defaults the button. Action on the blinds. Small blind passes, and the big blind folds as well. Heads up to the flop. You'd assume Ludo's got some kind of plan with King Trey. Is it just me, or does Atayo look like an extra from a Sergio Leone Western? It's not just you. Jack 6-3 on the flop. Bottom pair for Gaelic. My guess is he's probably not going to just slow down for the showdown. Bet 24, he continues for 24,000. I wouldn't mind a float from Mateo. He's got three to a straight, three to a flush, and it's a dry board, so sometimes you can pick up the pot when your opponent slows down. He calls the 24K. We go to the turn, which is the nine of spades. Mateo now with second pair. Check. Gaelic slows down. He checks. And I think a check behind here is probably good. Not often a worse hand will call. Mateo. Electing to take over the betting. Makes it 44,000. Gaelic with just bottom pair. Well, he's getting sticky. Looks like Ludovic Gaelic might know karate and crazy. He check raises to 118,000. Don't know what he's repping, and I think this check raise doesn't make a ton of sense. It's pretty much only going to get air to fold. Ateo, 88% favorite with one card to come. And with slightly better than air. Cool. He calls. Holy moly, what just happened? This was just a normal seeming hand. I mean, okay, yeah, Ludovic guy like opened King 3 off in the high check with like 30 players left in an EPT, fine. But still, it was bet and then a call on the flop with two back doors, fine. And suddenly, I don't know, Armageddon, like the end of the world just happened. Grant, explain to me, what is everyone doing? Uh, it's gonna. I'm going to be hard pressed to do that with complete accuracy in mm. this hand because Ludovic Gylik is just, in my opinion, clicking buttons in a lot of ways. I think that open preflop is certainly a button click. You open preflop with King 3 off. I mean, that is just not what you want to do generally. But Atayo, once he floats the flop with two back doors, which is a reasonable strategy, hits the nine on the turn, and Ludo does give him the check. Yeah. I wonder if Atayo went into autopilot mode when he decided to call the flop and just thought, anytime Ludo checks the turn, I'm going to bet. Because yeah. it seems like if there are going to be checkbacks for Atayo, especially against a guy who's liable to bluff the river if he gets the opportunity, hitting a 9 or a 10 are the perfect checkback cards. What do you think? I agree completely. I think this is a mistake to bet this card. Now, we see Ludo check raises, but I think it's a mistake anyway. Ludo almost always has a worse hand than this and honestly is probably check folding a huge amount of those worse hands, whether he has air or even if he has a small hand. Like When I saw Ludo check this in a Tayo bet, I assumed Ludo was just going to fold King 3. Now, he didn't, but Ludo clearly knows he's behind with king three so he's never going to call with it and this hand is too weak to really withstand too much heat i just don't know why we wouldn't check control the pot bluff catch the river or maybe bet for value on the river depending on how it plays out seems very straightforward against this opponent and it, yeah this opponent that's really important it's ludo yeah. it is so much better to let ludo bet the river we have position we get to see if he bets or not and if he checks again sure we can go for a little thin value but Ludo's going to bet the river so frequently, and unless it's like the Armageddon of rivers, the worst river of all time, we can call because it's Ludo yeah. and he's capable of having anything. And I feel like that's a much better strategy. Agreed. Um, but I think maybe Atayo did get into autopilot mode, or maybe he just bets the turn a little bit more frequently than you or I would prefer. Now, he does bet the turn, and Ludovic Gaelic does check raise. What do you think about this? Is this just Ludovic Gaelic being unwilling to let go of a hand, deciding he, like categorically winning a hand is more important than than playing to try to win the tournament like what's going on okay he's definitely trying like hell to win every hand clearly uh, he does to give him credit though he recognizes that a call is not profitable here he knows he's behind now he wouldn't think he's behind this way he wouldn't think it's because of nine turn he just assumes he's up against one pair and that's beating him he thinks if he bets he's going to get called again if he thinks if he check calls he's going to be losing and it's going to be a bad a, a negative ev play so he decides 
He can move a Tayo off one pair of hands by taking a different, stronger line and check raises. Now, we see that that's not true. We see a Tayo calls with the nine, and we don't even think a Tayo should be betting a hand as weak as a nine anyway. I don't know. This seems like it's probably not a profitable play ultimately by Ludo to do. But I think I understand what his thought process at least is, which is like this guy mostly has one pair. I'm going to take a stronger line to try and generate fold equity instead of a normal bet on the turn, which isn't going to work with my image. I mean, that is fair. However, you'd really expect a Tayo to have a lot of jacks in his yes. range. And if a Tayo knows Ludo at all, he is not folding a jack. Yes. And probably not folding it on a lot of rivers either, which makes me think this play is a little button clicky as well and yeah. just a little bit too ambitious from Ludo. I'd, now, love to, I'd love to argue I can't. Yeah, so we both agree. We don't really like the bet. We bo don't really like the check raise. But I think we disagree when it comes to Itayo's call, yeah. which I am okay with. I know it's not a very good hand with 9-10, but I don't want to undersell how maniacal Ludovic Gailuk is. This guy is in every pot, it seems like, always taking aggressive actions. I think it might be profitable to call, even though this is pretty low in our distribution, we would expect. We don't know what types of hands Atayo is betting on the turn. Maybe he's betting a six. But still, certainly it's not that good of a hand. I still like the call against this player. Yeah, I don't. Um, I don't think he should be betting a six. I don't think he should be betting a nine, neither does Grant. But if he's going to pick hands to bet with, and this is near the bottom of his range, which I would assume it almost always is, his value range or his denying equity range at least. I just feel like we can't call... I don't think we should be calling with every hand that we're denying equity with or betting for value with. I just think that's a mistake. Uh, this is, to me, one of the hands we can fold. We don't have to fold very many. I think we should probably bet call all our jacks. But this is a way to make a decision about, are we folding anything? Yeah, we can fold our, we can fold our nines. Uh, we also have much stronger hands here. If we flop to set or we turn to set, we can absolutely have turned to set in nines also. We have we have so many strong hands here, or stronger hands here anyway. I just don't know why we have to add this to the mix of hands we're calling with. We could have a few hands we bet fold. I think this should be one of them. That's all. And it's because it's Ludo and because he's yeah. repping basically nothing. Like, what is he repping? He's, he's, like, he's, he's, he's not sets. betting a set? Yeah, and on the turn, he's not he's, betting a set with his reputation? He's check right. Yeah, but he... Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're right. I don't know. You'd, you'd expect him often to bet his super strong hands. And in fact, Atayo doesn't fold, so he's in your camp, it seems, uh, agreeing with you, right? Yep, Camp Grant. If you want to be invited to Camp Grant, then you should join Nitrogen Sports <laughs> Poker. It's a great idea, Jonathan. Tell him why. Is it, is it a great idea? <laughs> camp Grant, really? Well, here's the thing you need to know. Nitrogen Sports, they're fabulous. They have the quickest withdrawals in the business. It's 90 minutes to get your money out of there. And it's a fabulous Bitcoin-only poker site where we have a monthly tournament at the end of which month, every single month, I should say. Who cares if I can't speak? They have 1,000 buy-ins guaranteed. You get like 200 players. They cap out at 300 players. It means there's always free money. It's always a massive overlay. You're crazy not to do it. All you have to do if you want to sign up for Nitrogen is go to our Twitter feed, at 2 poker Guys, and it's our pinned tweet. You click on the Nitrogen link, you sign up that way, and bam, you get access to this tournament for the rest of your natural and even unnatural life. It's the Ace of Spades. Brings a potential flush. It's also another overcard to Ateo's pair. Luda must absolutely keep betting on this card of all cards. However, I think with the way he's played it, he can't have a ton of flush draws or ace highs in his range. This bet's going to have to be super ratchet. Roughly two-thirds of the pot, 217,000. Bomb, 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 bomb. I'm supposed to say if you call turn, you have to call river, but honestly, that's way more easily said than done. Hit the flush, eh? It is conceivable that Gaelic would have check-raised the turn with a flush draw. And Ateo folds the best hand! Javier, it's okay. You got Gaelic. Oh, that's a rough one. I really think Ateo was poised to win a monster pot here. If if a card that wasn't so bad came off on the river, I mean, a pot that might have been nearly as big as a scarf, I think he could have won. <laughs> Maybe not as big as a scarf. I don't think there are pots as big as that scarf. Maybe. But I think I think he could have won a really big one if the Deuce of Hearts came off. I don't know if Ludo, Ludo could have stopped himself from betting, and I think Atayo could have called on the Deuce of Hearts or, or a card like that, you know? I got to say, Atayo really missed an opportunity here because that scarf, he could hide the entire an entire deck in there and just pull out whatever cards he needs and, yeah. make, and win pretty much every hand. He could, you know, he could super use effectively. He's not really super using, but I mean, he could just have anything he wants. He can always have the nut flesh. Like, what's he doing? 
He's, he's playing. <laughs> it's a he's huge being a fool. Uh, okay, so Ludo bets this card. I agree with you. This this feels like such a straightforward card for Ludo to bet because it's such a scare card for a Tayo. The thing you're usually winning or you're up against spades usually on the turn, right? And we if figure you're a Tayo, like, yeah, yeah. And so we we assume like I'm just going to call in on any nine spade. Sounds good to me. And if he has a set, he has a set. That's it. Or a weird two pair. Fine. And the spade comes and Ludo bets again. And you're now you're supposed to be losing to all of Ludo's range, right? I mean, you're supposed to be, but it is Ludovic Gylik. Yeah. So as we see, you're not because yeah. he has king three. <laughs> um, but yes, Ludovic should have more spades in his range as played. I could understand on the turn how Ludovic, with his reputation, would check raise rather than just betting because he figures that's the only way to get fold equity with my flush draw, with my reputation. Mm-hmm. So I think it is a legitimate line for spades for Ludovic Gylik, and that's problematic for Atayo because as we see, Atayo does not have any spades in his hand to block that either. So... I think it makes sense that Ludovic could have a flush. I think it's a good card for him to bet. I think he should do it. I think he knows he's behind. And I think Atayo has to fold. I think it's as simple as that. Yeah, I actually agree. I don't think there's too much to this. Ultimately, on the river, Ludo... I don't know if Ludo was going to bet all rivers or not. I think that's the interesting question. If he's going to bet all rivers, then Atayo probably has to call with almost everything he called the the turn with. That's value, right? Because he could have some draws, some big draws that he can yeah. fold. Um but if Ludo's only betting spades here or when he improves like to a king or a, or a three on the river, then Ludo's just going to win every time he puts chips in and gets to give up every time he doesn't, which is a kind of a sweet spot for him if he's going to play it that way. Yeah, still, I don't really love how Ludo played the hand. Yeah. It did feel button clicky to me. I think he was really destined to to lose a big pot here until the scarf guys decided they didn't like a Tayo scarf and put the ace of spades on the river. I mean, it's not a scarf. It's a freaking rug. It's a tapestry. Hang it from your wall. If you want to hang a tapestry from your wall, get in our comments and tell us what you think about this hand. We think there were many questionable decisions. Really, I mean, at all stages, I got to tell you, Ludo opening king three in the hijack, questionable. Atayo calling in the flop actually I think is not as questionable. He's got the two back doors. But once we get to the turn, all hell effectively breaks loose. Uh, Atayo betting we think is not great. Do you guys agree or do you think he should be betting his nine? Ludo raising we think is not great. Do you agree or do you think this is actually kind of cool and is a stronger, you're sort of representing a much stronger range? Atayo calling, Grant and I disagree on calling that raise. Grant thinks it's a good call. I think you got to throw some stuff away and I think this is part of that range that you should be throwing away. Let us know what you think about that in the comments. The river kind of played itself out, I think, but if you think Atayo should be calling that river or Ludo shouldn't be bluffing it, definitely let us know that too. If you want to hear us argue a lot more about the turn call by Atayo, we sure got into it on our podcast. It's the Breakdown Poker Podcast with the Poker Guys. You can find it anywhere you find podcasts, pretty much. I yeah. think most of the places that you find pretty podcasts. Much. It's a really good podcast. You could check it out and you could be happy, you know? And another <laughs> way to happiness is to buying our book, by the way. Yeah. There's a picture of the book on the screen right there. Go to Amazon. It's called How Can He Fold? Incredible Poker Hands Broken Down Decision by Decision. Just take a look at those Amazon reviews. Wet your whistle with some Amazon reviews, yeah. and then decide, yeah, this is the book for me. I do need this book, and for six of my friends, probably. <laughs>